This is a 3D printer. It's a filament or FDM 3D printer. But how exactly does it work? And how can you turn strands of plastic filament like this into something like this or even something like this? Let's start by looking at exactly how a 3D printer works. In this video, I'm using the most popular 3D printer ever made, the Creality Ender 3 Pro. But the lessons learned in this video will apply to all FDM 3D printers. This printer is known as what's called a bed slinger because the bed, the Y axis moves back and forth and the X axis moves side to side. Because there are so many different 3D printers available on the market, I can't show you how to set up each individual printer. However, most higher end 3D printers do come pre-assembled. Because the Creality Ender 3 Pro is so inexpensive, you do have to assemble it. Assembly is fairly straightforward and it should take around two to three hours the first time. FDM 3D printers work by extruding plastic layer by layer to create a 3D object. Basically, we call the material that the 3D printer uses filament. And in this case, I'm using PLA. It's the most popular and easiest to 3D print material. The filament gets fed through what's called the extruder. The extruder has a gear that forces the filament into this tube. So the filament goes from the extruder through this tube or just directly to what's called the hot end. The hot end heats the material and pushes it through the nozzle. Next, the 3D printer draws out the lines for each layer. And after waiting a long time, you finally get your 3D printed object. Now let's go through the entire process of 3D printing something from start to finish. The first step is finding a file to 3D print. You can find some really great 3D printable models on thingiverse.com, colts3d.com, printables.com, MyManyFactory.com, and on my website, 3dprinteracademy.com. Or you can design your own things in a program like Fusion 360 or Blender. 3D models are represented on the computer as STL files. A 3D model saved as an STL file basically gets broken down into tons and tons of little triangles like these. The more triangles you have, the higher the resolution of your model. Once you've found what you want to print, it's time to slice the STL file using a slicer. The most popular slicer is Ultimaker Cura. But what is a slicer exactly? Well, basically, you could drag your STL file into the slicer. You could rearrange it. And in this case, I want to arrange it like this. Once you have it arranged how you want, go ahead and click slice. If I go ahead and click preview, we can see exactly what the slicer does. The slicer basically slices up the 3D model into layers that the 3D printer will print. And here you can see a preview of exactly what the 3D printer will print. These are the individual layers. And you can see how they stack up to create the 3D object. In a slicer like Cura, there are tons of different settings, and this can be very, very confusing for beginners. However, most of the time, the default settings are really good. Next, you'll want to export the G-code file. For budget 3D printers, files are usually transferred to your 3D printer via micro SD card. And back in Ultimaker Cura, you simply click Save to Removable Drive. After you save the G-code file to your SD card, put it back into your 3D printer. Now, before we navigate to the file on the 3D printer and click Print, it's extremely important that the 3D printer's bed is level. And that takes us to the next step, which is make sure the 3D printer's bed is level. Now, this is where a lot of people get very confused. Leveling your bed does not mean that your bed is actually level. What it means is that the nozzle of the 3D printer is the same distance from the build plate at every single corner of the build plate. If you don't level your bed properly, you'll end up with a stringy mess like this. Now, because this is an overview video, I can't go into all the details about how to level your bed in this video, but check the description for a bunch of videos that you go to that go into a lot more detail for all of these steps. Once you've confirmed that your 3D printer's bed is level, it's time to 3D print your object. A good test file to print is what's called the 3D Benchy. It's basically a little tugboat. If I go ahead and slice this for my Creality Ender 3, you'll see it takes exactly one hour. I'll click Save to Removable Drive, and then click Eject. I'll insert the SD card back into my 3D printer, navigate to the file on the 3D printer, and click Print. Whenever you're 3D printing a file, especially on one of these budget 3D printers, it's really important to watch the first layer print. Here you can see I'm actually having some issues with the first layer adhesion. You can see in the back, it's hard to tell, but it's peeling up from the build plate a little bit. So I'll go ahead and stop the print and try again. 
Here you can see I had a very poor quality first layer. This is because of poor bed adhesion. It means the filament didn't stick to the bed very well. So what I'll do is apply a little bit of glue stick directly to the build plate. And now I'll go ahead and navigate to the file once again and click print. This time around, the first layer is sticking to the build plate much better. And after one hour of printing, Benchy finally finished. And the quality actually looks really good. So you don't need a fancy or expensive 3D printer to print really nice things. However, the print speed will be slower and you may have to do more troubleshooting. Let's compare the process of printing on a budget 3D printer with printing on the best 3D printer, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Bamboo Lab 3D printers use their own slicer. So if we go ahead and slice the STL file, you'll see it takes 33 minutes. However, about seven minutes of those are just prep time. That's where the 3D printer will automatically level and calibrate itself. Also, instead of having to print via micro SD card, I could print over the internet through the Bamboo Lab cloud. I simply just go to print plate, select my 3D printer, choose the color I want to print, and I'll click send to printer. The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is more than twice as fast as the standard budget 3D printer. This is it 3D printing in real time. The video is not sped up. It really is mesmerizing to watch. And here's the video sped up 10,000%. And you can see with absolutely no calibration or manual bed leveling, the print comes out really nice. I hope that gives you a great overview of the entire FDM 3D printing process. Now, of course, in each one of these steps, we could go into a ton more detail. So go ahead and check the other videos on this channel. I'll have some linked in the description below, as well as some of my courses where I could go into much greater detail. My name is Steven. I'm the creator of 3D Printer Academy. Best of luck on your 3D printing journey. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help.